Welcome to another episode of uh, Warmaster's Workshop. In this tutorial, we're going to um, tackle uh, female armor or creating armor for the female shape. Uh, we're going to be working with PVC slash Sintra, uh, which is basically a expanded PVC foam board. This is the three millimeter variety. You'll remember this from previous Warmaster's Workshop videos. Um, and I've got plenty of this stuff laying around, so we might as well use it. So we're going to put some cups into these. This is actually uh, Sabine Wren style armor. And if you have watched Star Wars Rebels, you will know that Sabine does have uh, more female form-fitting armor. Um, it's, not, it's not flat. It's not just um, um, creased over. It actually has a cup to it. And so we're going to tackle that, and I'm going to show you how you can do that uh, relatively simply uh, with just some, some hot water and uh, some epoxy and some just some regular everyday tools. So uh, the main tools we're going to be using um, are going to be a, a pencil, a ruler, and a, a razor knife or an X-Acto knife. I, I use the razor knife because it's a little bit easier to cut with that. And what I'm going to do, and how I'm going to determine where to put, put this curve, a lot of that's based on the plate and where the plate fits. Now, on the Sabine armor, um, the, the, the plate itself, right around here, is where the apex of the curve is on Sabine's armor, if you look at the actual um, cannon armor from Rebels, or how it's, you know, the cannon pictures of her from Rebels, the apex of the compound curve area in the armor is right, right where this, the apex right here is of this outside curve. So what we want to do is we want to get that same curve in, and the easiest way to do that on plastic like this, because this type of plastic, it doesn't tend to want to move in three directions. It does great, you know, it does great when you do it that way, or when you do it that way, but then when you try to do all those at the same time, it gets a little bit difficult. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the ruler to add in a dart, just like if you were sewing. We're going to add a dart, and we're going to go from the widest area of the plate, which is the apex of this outside curve here. And the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to zoom in a bit here so you can see, is I'm going to measure... I'm going to measure how wide we want to make this curve. Now, I don't want to make it super wide, so I'm just going to stick with about a quarter of an inch. So, using uh, using this, measuring this from the center of, of my ruler here, I'm just going to make a mark right here. I'm going to make another mark right here. That's a quarter of an inch. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this just a little bit. So you can see the mark there. And I'm going to go from the center, or from the, the apex of the curve there, and I'm just going to make a line inward here, right about, let's say right about three inches. So right there is where I'm going to make my line, right there, three inches. And actually, it may be off just a touch. We want to try to make it as centered as possible. So let's bring it up just a touch. There we go. That's, that's a little bit better. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go from this line here, the one we made earlier, the upper line, right to the end of our 3-inch mark there. And we're going to do the same down here from the end of our, from our mark here, our lower mark, a quarter of an inch, right to the edge that three inch mark so so there's our marks so we've got a nice triangle right here now let's go ahead and we're gonna cut that out and of course you always want the first cut to be a, just a score just like that Now what you can't see is that I've got a big pot of water back here boiling behind me. I 
that is what I'll be using to shape this plate. There we go. And let's see, let me move this up a little more. I'm just gonna clean out right in here. Because as you uh as you get further towards the end of this this area here, it, it closes off. So so what we're gonna do is as this heats up, it's going to bend around sort of like that. So you get a nice three-dimensional shape there. So now that we've got this one done, let's go ahead and mark this side. We'll use this as a pattern. Now if you can't make it all the way down to the end, that's fine, as long as you can make some starter lines. What I like to do there is match it up And I'll just go ahead and just lightly, ever so lightly. There we go. Score it just enough that I can see where to uh, make my marks there. You can see those marks. They should be right on the money. Now, if you need the patterns for these, these are the Antiana. Um, templates. So I'm just going to go ahead and drop this plate in the water and we're going to let it heat up and get nice and soft and then we're going to bring this this uh, dart around and uh, add our compound curve. So let's drop in the water and we'll be right back. I'm going to pull the uh, the center plate out of the hot water and we're going to go ahead and uh, form the complex curve right at the dart. So we're going to make this pretty quick because this plate is a little warm. All right, so all we do is we simply bend it over like that. And I'm adding a little bit of pressure to the top, to, to all sides, really. I'm just adding some pressure to every single side. So I'm, I'm pulling down, and I'll explain this as this starts to cool. And it's Actually, it's, it's pretty cool now. So as I'm holding it, what I'm doing is I'm I'm actually pulling down slightly with the palm of my left hand here on this side. I'm pulling down with my fingers on the top portion right here on the north of the dart. And then on this side, on the inside edge, I'm pulling down with my thumb. I'm sort of pushing down with my thumb and the inside of my palm at the same time as my fingers pull the top down ever so slightly. So now we have this nice complex curved piece. See, look at that, nice and curved. Now we'll compare this to the flat piece. Here's the flat, there's the flat piece. There is the complex curved piece. And when you put this on, when you, when you actually put this on to wear it, it's going to be nice and form-fitting because it's got all of the proper curves to work. Now, if you need more curve, you simply make this dart wider. You cut this dart further up. So if you need more curve, don't just cut it at half an inch or cut it at a quarter of an inch. Move up to a half an inch of space at the edge and then make your... Uh, your triangular cut down here. The wider you make your dart, the more curve you're going to get out of this plate. Now, uh, the thing to be careful of is as you add curve to this plate, okay, 
uh, as you as you remove material and you you're basically collapsing this plate inward to get this complex curve or compound curve you're actually losing surface area as far as coverage because now the plate is coming up in the center and it's shrinking on the sides so you're going to lose some surface area so you want to keep that in mind because what will happen if you're not careful is that you'll end up with a much smaller plate than you need so if you need to size up your chest plate um, your chest plate template just a little bit and uh, if you're using the Antiana plates since they print out in um, Adobe Acrobat or, or on uh, Edge whatever you're using there to print them out on most of the time you can actually increase those and I would uh, increase them by 5% increments so instead of just printing it out 100% print it out at 105% uh, or 110 percent and what you can do is you can cut your pattern I'll actually show you this this is the same plate but this is I printed these out at I believe a hundred and five percent so they're just five percent larger all the way around okay and what you can do to test this out is you can print out an extra template and you can cut it exactly like you're going to cut your plate and you can uh, you can tape it together and you can already see how much space you're going to lose because the paper is a flat material just like the plastic okay so let's go ahead and do the next plate here we'll do this plate and turn it over the right way or else I'll get uh, <laughs> I'll end up bending it the wrong way let me go ahead and pop this plate in the water and then uh, we'll come back and we will um, we'll do the same thing to it that we did to this and we'll add that nice complex curve and then we'll go ahead and we'll epoxy the dart and then we'll sand it down and you'll see how this will look It'll just be a, a beautiful plate you'll never even really know that there was a dart cut into it get it out of the water here we don't have a lot of time and then we just like we did the other one we bring it in and you want to make sure that you're pulling on all sides here all right so we've got our Sabine plates shaped and as you can see they they come together nicely now one thing to take into consideration is that um, up here where the the diamond goes when you wear these when you put these on um, you've got to remember that there's probably going to be a little bit of shrinkage in the chest diamond area so take that into account and trim that chest diamond accordingly trim that space so that uh, so that it's nice and even now if you take a look at these they look really nice I mean they're they're nice and evenly shaped the edges are I mean they're relatively even it may not be 100% perfect uh, but it's perfect enough so that you know it's not going to cause any problems there's a slight separation in the plates anyway so the edges not really a big deal those those inside edges as long as they're straight but uh, like I said just always check your chest diamond area just to make sure that it is um, nice and correct um, and and the right uh, it's the, at the right proportion so the chest diamond fits in there but no matter how small the person is I mean as you can see you can actually you can really you can put these on a relatively small person and bend them in and they're nice and they're nice and smooth and they work they actually look really nice for just such um, you know for just plastic plates like that that we've really done very little to it's literally taken us uh, I think heating them up took longer than actually cutting them and manipulating them so anyway what I'm gonna do now is we're gonna use a little two-part epoxy what they call five-minute epoxy which I've rarely ever uh, I've, I've rarely ever seen work in five minutes I'm gonna move these out of the way just gonna put a little bit of part A and part B in here not too much because we're just going to coat actually we'll put enough to cover the bottom because we want to coat the top and we want to coat the inside as well so this outside and the inside of that dart is going to get coated with this stuff
that. That should be enough. I think that's pretty, pretty even. I've had this epoxy for, good gosh, years, and I still have lots left there. So let's go ahead and mix this up. You really want to mix it up nice and, uh, nice and well. Remember, it does this. This specific type does uh, start to set in five minutes, or it's supposed to. And I found that um, this one's pretty close. So you mix it up till it looks has that nice sort of sort of cream look to it there. And we're just going to put a line of this on the top all the way down. I'm actually going to spread the plate out just a little bit so it'll pull it down in there and then let it go so it'll smash it all the way through to the back. And then make sure you get it all the way to the edge there. It's very important that you do that. And then I take, and I'll spread it around to try to even it up. It's okay if you get it, uh, if you get it in some extra places where you don't want it to get. Uh, it does sand off relatively easy after you've got it on, after it's cured. So, and just like we did with the other. Get a little bit more on here. We have plenty. Just run a nice thick little bead all the way down to the edge and then pull apart to work it in the center there and then let it go. And you can see how it pulls it right onto the inside as well. And then again, we pull our extra back Actually going to put the excess back in the cup there. I can feel this start to warm up, so we got to hurry. It means it's going to kick real soon. So now we're going to do real quick. We're going to put a little bit on the inside. Because you really want to make sure that this is epoxied on both sides. And then I'm just going to stand it up right there like that. And we'll get this side. And again, we put our excess back in the cup. And then we simply stand these up. Now I'm gonna let these dry for uh, about 48 hours, or I'm sorry, 24 hours, not 48. I'm gonna let these dry and set up for uh, for 24 hours. Oh yeah, you can feel this starting to starting to get warm, so it is starting to kick. That's when you know you've mixed it right. So we'll let this, we'll let these plates sit here and cure, and then we'll come back and we'll, uh, we'll see, uh, we'll see how it looks. We'll sand them down. We'll just use the mouse sander. We'll hit them with the, hit them, hit, uh, excuse me, hit them with the mouse sander, get them nice and flush so you don't see any raised area here. And uh, then we should be good to go. So we let our epoxy dry overnight. It's been several hours, almost 24 hours actually. And all we're going to do now is we're just going to take a mouse sander and sand all this down so it's nice and flush. Sand this, this corner so that it's nice. As you can see in the back, it's nice and cured. We're not really going to touch what's in the back here because you're never going to see that. It's best to leave it alone, but we're just going to smooth this out and uh, get it nice and flat. So <clears throat> it's always a good idea to feel 
to feel the area in here as you're uh, sanding it <clears throat> because the sanding does rough it up and there you know as the uh, as the epoxy dries it actually does sort of shrink up so you get a little bit of a uh, of a of a trenching effect here that you really want to get that nice and flat so that seems pretty good we'll still have to go over that um, with some finer sandpaper but that's good for the moment we'll go ahead and get this one knocked out this one as you can see I don't know if you can tell it or not but it's see how it's nice and shiny that means we still have a good bit of sanding left to go to get this um, so that it's flush all right so it looks like we have leveled that off really well so I'm gonna grab another piece of uh, lighter grit sandpaper so I have a piece of uh, 150 grit sandpaper here I'm just gonna go over this just to uh, smooth it out a bit smooth out some of that roughness always a good idea since you've already got the sandpaper out go ahead and hit the edges up and give them a nice sand to uh, round these edges you really want to round those edges because they can be sharp I wouldn't be overly concerned about uh, the diamond area especially if you're using if you're using the uh, the male patterned plates and have done the dart on them which you can you can use it doesn't have to be Sabine plates you can actually use the standard Boba or Django plates and do the same thing I would uh, I would I would probably go ahead and you could sand your uh, your uh, chest diamond area at that point but for this specific style the Sabine style I would wait until you fit it on yourself and then you will know exactly um, if this diamond area needs to be trimmed or not. Always save that to the last. That way you have no doubts of what does and doesn't need to be trimmed. go ahead and at least hit this part of the diamond plate of the diamond area because this part won't be trimmed only the vertical area here will get trimmed if it needs to be trimmed And then, of course, I just take it and lightly go over the entire plate. That way the, the uh, primer will stick to this better. If you just go ahead and sand down the entire plate. Just give it a real good um, scuff. Just like that. So when you run your finger over this, you don't want to feel you don't want to feel any uh, you know any change in the surface texture. You don't want to feel any bumps here or anything. You just want it to be nice and even, which it is. It is perfectly even. Let's go ahead and go on to this one.
Yep, nice and even. And just like we did with the other plate, hit up all these edges. One thing you definitely want to make sure you're careful about is you don't want to sand too hard that you eat, eat too far into the material. You also don't need to put a huge amount of pressure on your, uh, on your plastic or you will eat through it. It doesn't take, it doesn't take much when it comes to PVC to, uh, to eat through the PVC with sandpaper. Even when you're using it by hand, you could accidentally, um, sand one of these corners in too much. I mean, there's a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of things to keep in mind. Just because it's plastic doesn't mean that uh, it's necessarily easier or that you can't, uh, you know, you, you can't be mindful of what you're, what you're doing. Plastic is more forgiving than metal, but uh, if you cut it, or if you over sand it, it's just like if you do the same thing to metal. So, So, very nice. That's very nice. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to hit these with a little bit of uh, black primer. And we'll let that dry, and then we'll come back and take a look at it and see how they look. Here we have our primed plates, and as you can see... It all looks like one piece. There's no there's no puckered area over here. There's no raised areas. It's all it's all nice and flat. I mean it looks exactly like it was just made that way. Same with this piece. So at this point you have one or two options. You can go with putting another layer of primer. I always, um, I always suggest when you have done this kind of work to use some filler primer. This is just regular black um, pre-coat primer, but I always say it's a good idea to use a, a filler primer. And what that'll do is that'll help actually fill in any uh, inconsistencies that you might have. Um, it'll help fill those in right before you paint. Now after this, of course, you would add your silver layer or your aluminum metallized layer and then you would go from there. But as you can see it, I mean, it looks great. These, these look exactly the way they should look. They've got a nice, they got that real nice complex curve. They have a very mechanical sort of look, almost like they were stamped. And that's what you want. Um, you really want uh, to have a, a very, um, you know, kind of an asymmetric look here. Uh, when you're talking about two plates like this, they should look exactly like and, and have the same sort of industrial look so anyway that's uh i guess that's it for this uh this tutorial i hope you've enjoyed it i hope you've learned something i learned a little bit about making female armor plates remember this technique does work on uh pretty much any pattern uh, you can use the standard male patterns you can use a sabine pattern like this or you can go crazy and make your own um so just get creative have fun with it and uh yeah, I, I want to uh, give a big shout out to uh, all of my Patreon supporters. Uh, it's because of you that these these tutorials continue to happen. If you like these, if you're getting a little something out of them, please feel free to support us, and we'll keep making them. But uh, for now, thanks for coming out, and we'll see you next month in the War Masters Workshop.